the floor plan with all the uh, different logos, as you can see. So, um, like I mentioned, we had some hidden chairs in the middle. These were my lovely uh, assistants. They were managing the lobby only. So in, they looked into the lobby, and every 10 minutes they opened the lobby, and every student would be assigned on the logo here in the middle so they could look on the floor where is my company where i'm going to have my conversation with we also asked we did some test rooms with the companies and we asked the test the companies to use their logo as an avatar so before the event started like 10 minutes before the event started they entered the lobby with their logo they were allowed onto the floor they found, found their own table. They were located at their table. And then we sent out a message saying, okay, the event is about to start. Uh, in 10 minutes, you will hear the sign again, and we are going to relate, and uh, you will expect some other students at your table. So at 10 minutes, we had the uh, event managers, they opened the floor, the lobby again. Some new students were allowed into the floor, and some other students moved from table to table. And um, as you can see here, the students had an online portfolio and they showed the online portfolio to the companies. Um, that is a great best practice. And I did put into the chat, the avatar dimensions for logos is 128 by 128 pixels. So that is a square. So just know that anything that you have, your logo should be in the center as much as possible because it will. So like with that, no such in that upper right hand, um, knowing that is what keeps that no such right in the center. And that is a huge best practice because people, um, it's great to see your photographs, but if we don't know who the table host mm -hmm. is, um, it is, it's very hard to distinguish a guest and an attendee from the actual table host. So that is one of my favorite best practices. Thank you for yep. bringing that up, Henri. And another thing is uh, we had some uh, linking uh, event, like uh, multiple events at the same time, because we had some, uh, because we only work with one floor, because we didn't want to work with different levels, because you can't have different logos on different floors. So um, what we did, we set up different uh, buildings and people could actually click on the blue banners to go from one building to another building. So for example, and of course, beforehand, we, we send out the links to the specific buildings, but if a student had to move from building one to, uh, to building B, they used to click on the blue um, buttons there. Um, another example, wait, oh, this is a different one for a different company uh, using, um, um, logos on the tables and i wanted to show this one because you can also have a name on the floor so this one was used with multiple floors and we found a way to tell people which floor they were on and how they could actually find uh, the specific area where they were going to look at so for example um, we are now on level two and if, uh, if you enter this floor and you don't know where you would meet a team or a company, you clicked on this button and we showed on which floor you could find a specific company. For example, one is on floor one. Oh, sorry, the video goes too fast, but it gives you an idea. So we use this banner to show a picture and then uh, you were able to find what you can see on the sites. Now it says table one and table two, et cetera, et cetera. But you could easily uh, change that. And it helps people because in my opinion, in my experience, a lot of people have difficulty when they are on different floors and they don't know which floor they are. So if you would, and this event had a lot of different, like the four tables and the five tables at the bottom, they all uh, belong to a specific company. And because we had multiple floors, I was able to change uh, the names like table 17, I would easily say, okay, this is Coca-Cola, uh, table 18, this is uh, Starbucks, for example. And I could actually show that on the sponsor link and people know where to go to. So it's sort of navigation way yeah. around it. Henri, I'm sorry, can I have you, you just demonstrated another one of my best practices. Um, can you please go back to your banner where it has the, the floor map or the, the, um, the, the listing? 
Um, that is one of my best practices is using a banner for informational purposes. So I create a visual yeah. on the inside of my banner that tells me what exactly. floor, who is on. And if yeah. it doesn't fit on one like this, so say for example, you have a lot and it does not fit on one photograph, you can create it as a slide and export it as a .gif. Um, there's a lot of controversy around that word about how to pronounce it. So I just say .gif. Um, so you can export it and then it will do a slideshow through. So it will say, um, hang on for a couple seconds and it'll give you your first floor and then it'll automatically slide and it'll show you the second floor, then it automatically slide. So however you want to do it, what makes sense for your event, that is a best practice. Use the banner for informational yeah. purposes as your map of where people are. Sorry, Henri, thank you. Yeah, okay. Um, th this is a, a, a floor plan which we like nowadays people are going to have like um hybrid events so people meet in person and people meet online so especially schools they would like to and i created this one for a specific client because they wanted to use the large tables so like this is like a building with multiple rooms and every teacher had his or her own uh room so to say and they were located behind the desk because they were the first one to um to sit at this uh, specific room and of course uh, like you see in the third one from the left uh, the bottom room has a large table where you can meet with uh, 20 uh, students so that's what we created here for uh, schools um, other one with large tables and this is a poster session i wanted to show uh, to you because this one has uh, like you explained katrina um, with the whiteboards, every student had their own um, room, so to say, their own uh, specific area. They uploaded their uh, the presentation to the Miro board. From in, they were assigned to the round tables first, and from there on, they would move to every single, uh, uh, like, move from one uh, section to another section. Sorry, I was looking for the word. <laughs> Okay, I will share this uh, with you in the in the chat, so you are able to review the PowerPoint yourself if you like to look at it later. And you can also connect to me later if you like. Are there any questions? Do we have any questions for those best practices or do you have any um, specific? Um, so where I'm talking about avatars that are 128 by 128, I am talking about your profile avatar. So if you click, I'm going to share my screen really quickly. What I am talking about is are here in my profile. So my profile and I go to edit my profile and I want to change my my picture. Um, this is uh, they're they're now moving it up to four eighty by four eighty. So they did enhance this profile photograph. This is what I'm talking about is uh, mine is drawn to one twenty eight by one twenty eight. So again, I learned things in these as well. So when we did an update to our profile cards, we did an update to the size. So we're now up to 480 by 480. Um, but the prior was 128 by 128. So I stand corrected. It's 480 uh, by 480. But if you, like I said with Ian, if you have it smaller and I want to upload um, a new profile picture, I can zoom it in. And I can zoom it out. But again, it will 128 by 128 or 480 by 480. That is a square. Your profile will then circle up. Uh, so that's what I'm talking about avatars. So I apologize if I confuse the language. Um, that's where I meant as my best practice. So that's why I have the Remo event host. Um, I have a fabulous headshot, but it's more important for people to identify me if I didn't have my Remo banner here as well as a Remo event host when I go into events. So I don't have my my actual photograph. That's why I use that. So that's the best practice that I was talking about. So I apologize if I confused any 
anyone. Yeah, and I'll see a question in the chat from Lindsay saying um, editable, editable uh, table names. Yes, every when you create a floor plan, you always build in the the name. And what I did in the floor plan you just mentioned is that I created an area without seats, but only used the words. And I used the largest font size. So you can actually put it somewhere on the floor that people know, OK, this is the level I am on. I hope that answers your questions, uh, Lindsay. And that's part of the fun with the customizable floor plans is that um, as a, a floor plan designer, if you're really good at it, and, and Henri is, and I am very much not, um, <laughs> so I'm happy that he's here to explain this because I, I've tried floor plans and I can't, but you can have a lot of fun playing with them. Um, I'm gonna show you an example of a floor plan that I use for expos, for job fairs, and that can be used for poster sessions as well. I've worked on this um, with Marvin, who is one of our internal designers here. Um, so I have my um, display expo sort of area, private tables for chatting, interview tables, waiting tables that are single, and then um, these are classes or overflow tables. So again, there are a lot of different things that you can do with a customizable floor plan to make it yours and to make it your own. And most importantly, to make it make sense in your event to your specific folks. Um, so you know how your flow is. So for me, um, on my floor plan that I use, I even on the first floor, because I don't use the first floor uh, for anything other than networking and lobby, I will put a tip, turn on Mike and Cam. I will put that as my table name. Um, I will put um, move, floors using elevator on left or I'll do like little arrows depending on there's a character limit so I will do something like this like if I'm right next to this table so next to here I'll, I'll even change my table names to tips um, so that's again another idea your only limitation generally with your events is your budget and your um, your imagination and then if you have a really good floor planner <laughs> Yeah, and I, to add on on that one, if you are sticked, if you have to do it all in one building because you have like eight floors, or um, what, uh, what an idea is as well that you, if you're on the first floor, like Katrina just explained, that in every table name on the first floor, you say, okay, this is like the lobby, this is where we all meet, go to the uh, next floor for the real event or the real meeting space because the that's the uh, that's the thing when you enter the floor in remo you will uh, automatically locate it uh, to some of the tables and you don't want to be located to someone who's in the middle of a job interview or um, that so th to prevent that you say use different floor or multiple uh, uh, simultaneous events the other thing that you can do with that as well is you get around the problem of how do i let my table hosts in early so they can get to their table before their table is populated. So what I do in advance is I tell that table host specifically exactly where they are going to go and I already have that table labeled. So if my uh, poster host is on floor three, table one, I will send that in advance and say, as soon as you get into the event, click on floor three, go to table one, and that's how you get your seat. Same thing with my employers. So that way I can let them all land and then get up and I don't have to give 500 speaker permit, not that they can give 500 speaker permission, but I, I, I don't have to give everybody speaker permissions and then revoke them once they get in so they can get in early. I don't have to open my building and then risk um, guests coming in early. So that's also one way that I manage that is how do I get around that there's no assigned seating. Um, and I use this landing area as a, whoa, okay, what am I looking at? How am I doing? What am I doing? How can I network? Uh, so that's one thing that I do. Um, I'm gonna sh stop sharing my And then we have a question um, Amy from Amy. Are you hearing that poster halls will remain virtual for the long term? Um, I actually am. Um, I am actually hearing that they're either gonna be virtual or that they are going to be at least some hybrid model because what individuals are finding out is that their reach 
has just grown exponentially. So you may only have certain subject matter experts. You may only have peers. You may only have funders in your local area. And if they can't physically fly into your space for that one moment in time, and right now we still have some, some COVID lockdowns happening around the world. We have budget restrictions, especially with the universities. Budgets are getting cut. Um, funding hasn't been coming in as much as it has been with a lot of the universities I talk to. Um, and, and it's just, it's efficiency. So if, if a world renowned expert is in, oh, I don't know, maybe the Netherlands <laughs> and I need that person to be in my event, am I going to take on the, the cost of getting the plane ticket, the accommodations, the per diem, everything to send this person to me? Or can I just open it up this way and then not need visas? need passports, not need travel plans, not need an entire uh, way to do my reach. So um, Andre, I don't know if you're hearing anything else. And I, I know, Ian, that you do a lot of, of poster sessions. Are you guys, uh, I'm going to, um, Ian, where are you at, Ian? Just to oh. add on one more thing. I think it's very important that you do test versions, rehearsals before you yes. get, like with the, with the organizers. Absolutely. You, you have to do rehearsals. You would do rehearsals in the real world. You have to do rehearsals here. Um, so, so Ian, Henry, are you, are you hearing the same thing that, that things are going to stay virtual in this world, uh, that they're going to be hybrid, that, that people are anticipating not like shutting off the virtual aspect of things? Very much so. Um, our, our, our new tagline is um, digital events are not second best. There's so many advantages to digital events. And what's happened is a lot of organizations in particular have realized this. So certain industries are chomping at the back, uh, just chomping at the bit to go back to in person. So entertainment, sporting events, festivals, areas where um, you really it's much harder to do it online and people just want to get back out there and do that. But anything in the commercial sphere, Covered cost savings. They've discovered carbon footprint savings. So cost savings at a time when their their budgets are are being pressed because of the pandemic. Um, carbon footprint savings at a time when uh, they are being loaded with carbon saving budgets. Um, even before you get to a whole plethora of of, of other stimuli. So. Um, we're finding that, particularly in the commercial sector, there's a huge appetite. Also, in terms of the increased inclusion, the increased reach um, geographically and, 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 and with different uh, um, organisations and different people, they maybe wouldn't have reached with in-person events. Inclusion has been a huge one for us. Um, the amount of people who can access events uh, that are online as opposed to being in person. So, um, I, And also, I think there's a familiarity. So before the pandemic, even I was like, oh, God, you want, you, you want to meet by video chat? Do we have to? Um, whereas now, I almost don't want to use the telephone because I don't get that visual cue from people. You, know, you can see when someone's bouncing up and down and they want to speak on video. Well, you just don't get that um, on, on the telephone. So for a whole plethora of region, reasons, we're not going back to the way things were before. Um, and in many ways, that's a good thing. Um, and using platforms like Remo, where we can take all of that pre-pandemic communication sophistication of um, popping, you know, seeing Dave's arrived, or popping over to see Dave and say, "Hey, Dave, I really want you to come and meet Katrina. She's over on table three. Can, you know, can you can you come over?" Um, there are very few platforms that can recreate that kind of um, facilitation, uh, and also just getting people talking. We do a lot of commercial events where. We'll um, start with a welcome, we'll have a couple of TED Talks, and then someone will stand up from the company and pose a couple of key questions. And then we'll go into breakout sessions at tables, and then we'll come back into presentation. And some of the people, but different ways we can feed back from table. One of the ways is some, each table nominates somebody who then comes up um, and, and kind of gives a synopsis of what was discussed at that table. And the senior management teams can kind of parachute in and out of the presentation as they prefer. So now that some of our clients have realized how much we can do with platforms like Remo, um, they're becoming much more comfortable about using um, digital events to go a level above Teams and kind of the general internal communications, um, but reducing the amount of in-person. And we've even had, we've also had clients who have essentially said, I mean, an example is some of the APPGs, the all-party parliamentary groups, who um, 
having gone to virtual are finding they're getting more business done, they're getting more parliamentarians attending, um, they're getting a better outcome. And so they're saying, well, why would we go back to expecting everybody to trog up to the committee room. So they'll transition. And I think that's the key part of all of this. It's transition, transitioning to a different way of working, combining digital with in-person. They'll have a couple of soirees in the Houses of Parliament each year to, to ensure everybody can meet face-to-face -face periodically and, and, and maintain that personal connection. Um, but the majority of the business will be done online now. And, and I think that's what we're seeing more and more. So we're, we're not slowing down at all. If anything, we're accelerating at the moment. I, I agree. Thank you so much, Ian. Thank you so much, Henri. I really, guys, appreciate your uh, your information. Um, for those of you guys who are not already in the Remo Revolution community, um, I'm going to put the link here right now because that is where we can continue the, the conversation after this. If you're watching the video replay, this is where you can ask uh, Henri, Ian, myself. Uh, you can ask us questions to follow up. Um, this is our community, which is a very, very robust community. Ideally, if you have a question, our community has been around for a year. Uh, we are well over uh, 1,450, uh, 1,450 people in the community. Chances are your questions have already been asked and answered by people who know what they're talking about. Um, there are other folks inside here as participants as well who are extremely knowledgeable. Um, I and um, they, they do do a lot of poster sessions. And so that's why I asked them to come up today to, to help give some of the best practices and to um, share some of the things that they know work because they're, they're on the front lines doing this. Again, for academia, there is a swath of uses. Um, and, and another great thing that we found with academia is that for our professors and our tenured professors, they are all also members of professional associations. And what we're finding is they are able to extend what they're doing with, with Remo, with what they're doing with the universities into their professional associations and um, enhancing those meetings and enhancing those uh, conferences and things as well. So there, there are so many things that you can do with your virtual space, um, not just one single solitary one-off use case and be like, okay, so now we're gonna go to something else. Uh, if you if you're using a platform uh, you've paid for it monthly you've paid for it annually <laughs> and, and you're only doing like two or three um, things a, a month or a year there's a huge potential to, to still be able to engage your audience because this is where the the future of, of business is it's virtual um, and I love that Ian's talking about like I don't even want to make telephone calls anymore I'm totally dating myself by saying I would watch the Jetsons as a kid and be like oh heck no I would not want a video chat I would like dive behind the couch because I wouldn't want anyone to see me without makeup or like my hair done perfectly and now I'm just like hey what's up everybody that that's the, the Jetsons predicted a lot of our world today so um, with that, I am going to ask for any final questions. Um, I have extended this building for a half hour so we can go into conversation mode. Um, I do have some friends and teammates here. So we have Amy, we have Aniket, uh, we have Noemi, and we have Shirley. So if you want to talk to somebody from Remo, um, we all have the Remo tag on our avatars. Um, our profile avatars. I unfortunately am going to be leading another um, event here in just a couple minutes. So I'm only going to be able to stay for another minute or so. Um, but if you have, uh, I am also in the community. Um, Ian, Henri, thank you so very much. Uh, I'm going to make one last call for any questions that you have for any of us, for the group. Um, regarding uh, best practices for poster sessions, exhibitions, academia presentations, um, STEM presentations, anything where you need to have some information relayed out where people come at their will to visit so it's not necessarily structured. That's the idea behind these um, types of, of halls and events is that it's not necessarily specifically structured in that time and it's a little bit different than networking. Um, Oh, sorry, Ian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, excuse the shirt all, so it's a video. It's, yeah, that was my, my fear with, with my Jetsons when I was a kid of like, oh. <laughs> so, all right, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate your time. Um, the
we have coming up every single Monday. We have Success Labs Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. They are now open to everyone. Uh, so it is a weekly topic-based discussion that we have. And then on the 28th of July, Taz Neem and I, who are Wonder Twin Powers uh, Activate and we are Cat Neem, uh, we will be hosting a Minute to Win It participant game show where you as the audience are going to be playing and learning how you can host a game show in Remo yourself. Um, so these are the links to register every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Please join us for Success Labs for a weekly topic-based discussion. Um, Minute to Win It, that is going to be our participant game show to learn how to host game shows in Remo. So uh, with that being said, I will close us down into conversation mode. If there are any questions that you have, please feel free to find one of us at the tables and ask. Thank you, everyone, for coming.